Sandra. I'm really happy that you guys can join me today. So uh, just a couple of things. Make sure you have your block nearby if you need a block or maybe two. And make sure your water's nearby your mat too. I've got my water over here. So today is going to be I'm like an intermediate, um, an intermediate vinyasa flow, but just like in the studio, make it yours. You don't have to do every posture. It's it's just my offering and Hot House's offering to you. So let's get started, and we're gonna start start in tabletop today. So go ahead and get your shoulders stacked right over your wrists. Hi guys, I see people joining in, I'm so excited. And you're gonna have your hips stacked right over your knees. So, pull the belly button in and up. We'll begin with some cow cats just to warm up the spine. So as you inhale, the heart and the hips are gonna go up to the ceiling. And on your exhale, arch the back, curve the spine, tuck the chin, press away from the mat. And inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. And one more. Inhale, cow. And exhale. Bring your spine back to neutral. We're going to get that core going early today, get some energy going. So reach out with your right hand like you're shaking hands, like imaginary, because we're not allowed to shake hands anymore, but um, reach out like you're shaking hands with an imaginary person. And you're going to reach your back leg out like you're pressing the foot against the wall. So lengthen the spine, and on the exhale, bring the elbow into the knee. Inhale, back and forth. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, back and forth. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, back and forth. One more. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, back and forth. Bend the knee. Bring that back heel up and in. Reach around with your hand and press the top of the foot into the hand. Get a stretch. Maybe even get a little bit of a back bend, shoulder opening. And release back and forth. Hands and knees to the mat, wave out the spine. Okay, we'll switch sides. So the left hand comes straight out in front of you. And imagine you're pressing against a wall, flexing your right foot really strong. Belly button comes in and up. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Core is engaged. One more. Pull it in. Bring it back and forth. Pull the heel into the glute. Reach around. See if you can take hold. And now press the top of the foot into the hand. I'll find a back bend. Maybe you look up at the ceiling or the sky or whatever it is above you right now. And release back and forth. Bring it to tabletop. Wave the spine. Let the head go. And press it back. Child's pose. Now your knees can be to the edges of the mat if that feels good. Or you can bring your knees together. Reach the hands in front of you. And now stay in your child's pose here. With every inhale, feel the crown of your head reaching forward. And feel every exhale. Allow your hips to just 
release a little bit more, let them sink back toward your heels. Inhale. And exhale. One more inhale. And exhale, release. Okay, downward facing dog. So curl your toes under, pull the belly button in and up. Send the hips to the sky and pedal out your dog. Let it feel good. Let the hips go side to side. Inhale your right foot up to the sky. Bend the knees, stack the hips open. Pull that right heel into the left glute. And we'll make circles with your knee from your hip joint. Try to press equally between both hands. the palms back to center. We're going to place both hands to the inside of the left foot this time and pivot toward the front. Find your goddess legs just for a moment and we're going to pivot ourselves back to the right side of the room. Step the right foot back, downward facing dog. Raise your left foot up to the side. Bend the knees, stack the hips. Pull the glute into or the heel into the right glute and take some circles. It's always a little different in the morning. I'm always a little stiffer in the morning. Change directions. Put the leg back on the straight. Anjanasana. Step it up to the top of your mat. Lower down the right knee. Sweep the hands up to the side. Find cactus arms this time. Inhaling and exhaling. Nice. Frame the front foot with your fingertips. Curl the back toes under, half split stretch. So sorry for the 
have my butt facing you guys for a second. So bring your left hand to the inside of your left foot. We're going to pivot through goddess. I'll get better at these camera angles, I promise. And Banshee and Asana. Lower down the left knee. Fingertips go up to the sky. Bend the elbows. Cactus arms. Now imagine that you're like holding something in your armpits. Like maybe like you're trying to hold two oranges and not let them fall out. And we're activating our serratus now. Release the fingertips forward, curl the back toes under, half split stretch. Try to lengthen your spine as you stretch. Shift your weight Forward, you're going to plant your left hand down, right arm up this time, close twist. Pull the back heel in, reach around, take hold if you can. And if you can't reach it, you can always use a strap. Um, and even just activating the hamstring by pulling this heel in as best you can, that is going to lengthen the quad. So no worries if you can't reach your foot. Find a back bend here. Nice, guys. Release, and we're going to pivot around. Back through goddess, just toward the left side this time. So place um, both hands to the inside of your right foot. Find your goddess. And back to a low lunge, step it back, downward facing dog, shift the weight forward, high plank, press away from the mat, belly button in and up, lead forward with your collarbone, breathe, relax your jaw, your jaw does not help, and lower the knees, the chest, the chin. Bring your heart forward, cobra. And we're going to tap our chin and do cobra two more times. So exhale, tap the chin. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, tap the chin. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, tap the chin. Inhale, cobra. And child's cobra. yourself up to seated and we are gonna we're gonna do boat pose pretty early on today so there's a few ways you can do boat pose you can have your hands behind you you can support underneath your thighs with your hands you can have bent knees you can have straight knees you can have um, just whatever feels good to you and you can have your hands if you uh, really want to go for it you can have your hands reaching for your toes. So pull the belly button in and up. You are strong, you've got this. Imagine you're squeezing a block between, um, between your two legs. Inhale, low boat. Exhale, high boat. Inhale, low boat. Exhale, high boat. Inhale, low boat. Exhale, high boat. Inhale, low boat. How many more should we do? Um, let's do three more. Three, two, one. Hold your low, hold your low, hold your low. And release it, no more fault. Just feel the weight of your body on the mat. Let yourself be heavy. 
remind yourself that you are supported. Supported in your practice, supported in your community. Hug your knees into your chest. And you can rock side to side, massage your back a little bit. Now we're going to wind up in downward facing dog. So however you want to get there, if you want to rock back and forth a few times and flow through a vinyasa, I invite you. So downward facing dog. How are you guys feeling? It feels good to move. Like I'm starting to sweat already and I don't even have the heaters on. Right foot up, take the sky, bend the knees, stack the hips. Now you can stay right here. If it's in your practice, then go ahead, flip your dog. Right in the front body. Flip your dog back over, warrior one. Pull the right knee into the chest, step it up to the top of the mat. Warrior one. Open warrior two. Reverse it peaceful. Extended side angle. Thigh lock. Floor, whatever works for you. See if you can lower your hips a little bit more. Release into the practice. And reverse it peaceful. Extended side. Now straighten your front leg, pull the belly button in, Trikonasana, reach forward, reach forward, reach forward, and triangle pose. Try to lengthen from both sides of the body. Bend into the front knee, back to warrior two. Reverse the warrior once more. Side body, how much can we lengthen? And extend it. Bring your left hand down. Bring your right arm forward. Get long here. Now we're going to reach the right arm up. Keep your knee bent, get the twist, and now straighten the leg, pull the right hip back, and find your wide-legged forward fold. Shift around however you need to. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale. Now walk your left fingertips up in front of you. Walk your right fingertips behind you, underneath you. Get the really good stretch here. And press, press into the outer blades of your feet.
Now we're gonna pivot all 10 toes. We're gonna face the right side of the room. Lower down your left knee, and you're gonna nuzzle your right shoulder as much as you can underneath this left thigh. Now you might stay here, and that is perfect to stay right here, just working that shoulder to thigh connection. If it's in your practice, you can curl your back toes under and you can straighten your front or your back knee. If epipoda is in your practice, go ahead and flatten your piece. If you're practicing your jump pad, go for it. And we're all gonna land on our bellies. Stretch your arms to the back of the room. Rest your favorite cheek on the mat. You could take a nap right here. It would feel really good. We're gonna find floor bow. So put your head back on straight and you're gonna take hold of either your feet or your ankles, whatever feels best to you. So the knees will be right about hip width distance. You don't want them too wide. And on the inhale, we're gonna press the feet into the hands and we're gonna lift the chest, leading with the collarbone though. So inhale. And breathe. Press, press, press. Press, press, press. One more breath. And release. Beautiful. Rest the opposite cheek on the mat this time. Press yourself to tabletop. Raise the spine. And downward facing dog. I'm gonna switch sides so I don't have my back to you. So downward facing dog. And inhale the left foot up to the sky. Bend the knees, stack the hips. And flip your dog if it's in your practice. your dog back over, warrior one, pull the knee into the nose, step up to the top of your mat, check out your form, warrior one. And what I mean by check out your form, you want your back foot at about a 45 degree angle and you're pressing into the outer blade of that foot. Now this front foot, we're going to have some external rotation coming from this hip. So never the knee, but the hip. And I think of it as pointing my knee toward my pinky toe. Press into the front heel here and shine your hips as best you can forward. Open warrior two. Make sure you still have that slight external rotation, not too much but just a slight external rotation coming from the hip. You're gazing over your middle and ring fingers. Legs are strong. You're working hard, but you're working hard with grace. Maybe you did some lightheartedness. Reverse it, peaceful yoga, peaceful warrior. Extend the side angle. Reverse it peaceful. And extend. Reverse it peaceful. Straight in the belly button in and up, trikonasana, reach forward, reach forward, reach 
and back into the front knee. Warrior two, reverse if you slip. Extend the side angle. Right hand down, left hand forward. Really find length in the spine here. This, this transition here is key to really getting a good stretch and good twist. Reach the arm forward. Straight in the front leg. Guide the left hip back. Bend back into the knee, wide legged. Inhale. Right fingertips forward, left fingertips underneath. We're going to pivot all ten toes to the left. Like we did on the right side, lower down your back knee first, and then really work that shoulder to thigh connection here. And again, if you stay here, that is perfect. That's a really great place to be. If you want to go to Akapana or anywhere in between, I invite you, friends. The key I find to get into this posture is to really shift your weight forward. So Lean forward with your collarbone. And if you're practicing your um, flyback into low plank, I invite you to do that as well. So whatever variation of this pose you, you want to try today. And play as long as you like. The rest of us will meet on our bellies. Favorite cheek on the mat. One more floor bow. If you took hold of your feet the first time, maybe go for your ankles this time. So on the inhale, press into the hands. on the mat, if you can remember. I think I forgot what cheek I had the first time. And press yourself into tabletop. We'll come facing forward on our mat. If you have that trusty block, I invite you to take it. We're going to find Malasana. So that's our yogi squat. You can sit on a block or not. The only thing I ask is that, just like in Goddess, whatever direction your feet are going, just please try to have your knees and your feet going in the same direction. Just that way we're not pulling on the knee joint. We really want the external rotation. It will be coming from the so hands to prayer, and maybe you kind of nuzzle your triceps into your thighs, and press the palms to the heart. Close your eyes. And take five breaths right here in your molasses.
missing curl. So I'm going to get my lock out of the way. And if you don't fly your curl, that is fine. We can just hang out in curl prep, and that's a really cool place to be. So what you're going to do is you want to bring your knees to the outside of your triceps. And once we get going, what's going to give you a lift, so you can practice right here on the ground, is hugging the inner thighs in together. So go ahead and just practice that sensation right here because that is what's going to give you the lift when you take flight, if you choose to do so today. Okay, so we're going to get our knees on the outsides of our, of our triceps. You're going to have to look forward and it's a little bit of a leap of faith here. So you're going to lean your way forward. Maybe you take one set of toes off the ground. Maybe you take the other. And watch, guys, as I hug my inner thighs together. Do you see the lift I got? Yeah, Shelly taught me that. <laughs> I'm so excited about it. So inhale, maybe you can straighten your arms. Straighten, straighten, straighten. Relax your face. Relax your jaw. If you practice your jump up, go for it. The rest of us. Find your malasana. Again, go ahead, use that, use that block if it feels good. And we'll just take a few more breaths here in malasana. You guys are doing awesome. And release your malasana. Before we move on, we'll take a reverse tabletop just to kind of counteract all that um, forward movement we just did. So bring your hands behind you, your fingertips will be pointing toward your heels, and we're going to lift with the hips and the collarbone. one chaturanga today. Well, unless you jump back to low plank, but we haven't done any high to low, but I am getting an arm workout. I don't know about you guys. And release. Beautiful. Okay. So we're going to start simple here, and then you can just take it as far as you choose. So please pull your left heel in. You're going to put your right sole of your foot right into the crook of that left elbow, and the knee is going to come into your right elbow. Sit up tall here. Hug your knee in. If it feels good, you can rock the baby. And just opening up that hip. love and some gratitude while you rock your baby. Thank you for getting up. There's a million other things you could be doing, but you're practicing yoga today. Now if compass is in your practice, you're going to take your right hand kind of like a claw underneath your right calf, and it's okay if this hip comes up off the ground. You're going to take hold of the outer blade of your foot with your left hand. Now we're going to bring that hip back down. Reach really far out with this right hand. Give yourself space. And you're going to peek underneath your left shoulder as you straighten the leg. My leg isn't straightening all the way today. Usually it doesn't, and that's okay. We're just enjoying the stretch. Looking at the world from another perspective. Keep breathing. Now you can stay here as long as you like. If you want to try ele elephant, you're going to keep that um, calf to tricep connection here. And you're going to bring your hands um, to your sides. And you may want to put each hand on a block. That helps give them a little bit more height. It's going to be easier if you have this heel pulled in to start. 
So I like to come up on my inhale. So inhale up for your elephant. And maybe straighten that leg out. Press, press, press. If anyone wants to go into crazy eight, cross your left ankle over your right. And you're gonna shift your weight forward. Now that inner thigh um, action that we did during crow, you're gonna do it here. Hug the inner thighs together. And now, Sarah Poppy, this is you, Carolyn, anyone else out there who practices Ekapada, go ahead and see if an Ekapada happens. Beautiful, guys. Play as much as you want. Find yourself on your belly. Hands out to the side. Put your head back on straight. On your inhale, lift your hands and feet. Exhale, release. Inhale, lift your hands and feet. Exhale, release. Inhale, lift your hands and feet. Exhale, release. Press yourself back up to seated. Side, and then we'll go into some yin. Ah, great job, ladies. All right, we got this. So we're going to pull the right heel in. And again, guys, you can stay right here. This practice can be as challenging or as restorative as you want it to be. And for some of us, the challenge is allowing ourselves to be restorative. So again, feel free to stay right here. I think I could stay here all day. This is a good place to get your breath back too. Because we have to balance the challenge and the rest. Not enough stress, we become weak. Too much stress, we may snap. So uh, it's the balance. And one, um, the rest is as important as the challenge. If you would like to come into compass with me, you're going to take the, the claw hand and it's going to come underneath your left calf. Pick that hip up. Pick it up as much as you need to create that space. Then your right hand will take hold of the outer blade of the foot. Give yourself some space. Walk the left fingertips out to the left side. And then peek underneath your shoulder. And maybe you give yourself a breath or two here before you start to straighten. What I love about the postures is like they're alive. We, we evolve into them. It's not about just coming to point A and then to point B. And the, the longer we stay sometimes, oh, I'm shaking. It's awesome. <laughs> the longer we stay sometimes, um, the more the posture has to teach us. So stay here if you like. And if you want to come to elephant or elephant prep, make sure you still have that good um, calf to tricep connection here. Your hands can come to blocks. That's nice to give some extra space. And you're going to press up. If you want to challenge a little more, lengthen the right leg. That's the elephant trunk. If you want to go to crazy eights, Crazy eight's appropriate posture for the world right now. You're gonna cross your ankles, straighten your legs, engage the core, hug your elbows in together. You got this. If you want to try a kapata, go for it. And release all 
all the way down to the belly when you're ready. Awesome job, yogis. Get a drink if you need to. Really, really strong practice today. by all means. So place the soles of your feet onto the mat and press your hips to the sky. Imagine you're hugging a block between your inner thighs. You want to use your inner thighs more than your glutes, although you will use your glutes some. You can clasp your hands underneath you and press that fist package into the mat. Press the back of your head into the mat. You may have a little bit of a, a chin tuck here. Press the soles of the feet into the mat. It should feel really good after those arm balances we just did. And when you're ready, come on down one vertebrae at a time. And I invite you to do another bridge just like that. If wheel is in your practice, go ahead. Only if it's in your practice. And lower down one vertebrae at a time. Keep your feet to the outer edges of your mat and just touch your knees together. Palms open, facing the sky. Feel all that energy you created and feel it begin to settle. Try to have um, your sacrum and your shoulders both making contact, even if that means maybe you grab from your calves, or even lower than your calves. You can rock side to side if it feels good, a little lower back massage. Bring the soles of your feet together. Allow your feet to meet the mat. Palms to the sky. A posture of surrender up any illusion of control.
Please take a long savasana today. Um, savasana can extend way longer than when I go offline. Get comfortable. And feel your jaw relax. your lower back relax. Feel your hips relax. Feel your glutes relax. And then relax them even more.